What they do, YouTube, man, I'm back again, bro. Look at here, man, look at here, man. It's been a little rough out there, man. When they grow these goddamn dreads back, you know, you know, that's what I'm about to do, about to grow these dreads back, man, one more time. Once again, bro, if anybody know about magazine publications, y'all know this was one of the originals. Don D. This was one of the original um, urban magazines. You had Don Diva, you had Fizz Magazine. Those was one of the originals, man. Then we got Street Elements Magazine, real original out of the South. See, when you had Don Diva and Fizz Magazine, they were giving all the shine to all the dudes up top, you know? You know, from the um, uh, Richard Porters, the the uh, Guy Fishers, the, um, uh, um, you had the guys out of Detroit, you had um, Maserati Rick, um, Alpo, Richard Porter, you got um, Bumpy Johnson, um, you had Fat Cat, you got all these different guys that was up top, man, doing their thing, and um, Don Diva and Fed Magazine gave them guys shine, man, that they needed, you know, but then we got, um, we got Street Elements Magazine, man. Well, we were for the we were for the South, you know, like in the Fed, you call the South Car, the South Car. We were for the South, man. So that's all the homers that was out of Texas, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, so forth and so on. We were gonna get them they shine at Street Elements Magazine, you know. That's what we come about to get them guys they shine. But this ain't this, this video ain't about that. That's just a little history about who we are. You know about who we are and why we do this and how long we've been doing this. You know, that's all this about. But anyway, matter of fact, before I even get started, my homeboy Cavario, make sure y'all go copy his book, man. Raised by Wolves. Go grab that. You know, he's one of the founders of Don Deeper Magazine. But this video, man, is strictly for what is your end game? What is your end game, bro? And this is for my all my young homies out there, man. That's in the streets, that's getting money. If you're doing drills, you're doing drills. If you scamming and robbing, you scamming and robbing. I'm asking you, what is your end game? Now we all know most of us jump out there in the streets at a young age. Age of 14, 15, 16. That's normal the age when you start getting involved in the streets. By the time you're 18, 19, 20, 21, you're down there OG in the streets. In the streets to the young guy that's up under you. I'm asking you, what is your end game? If you're 20 years old right now, I mean, in 10 more years, you'll be 30. What's your end game? Do you plan on being in the streets till you're 30? Till you're 35, till you're 40? You know, the odds are they could pick you up at any time. And it depends on the level of that you get at within that time, time frame, probably gonna depend on how much time you get. Not necessarily, because you got a lot of peon guys out here in the streets that's catching a whole bunch of time just on some stupid shit. Just by drills. Look at them boys in um Chicago that killed the dude duck. I wanna ask yourself, how many of them really had some money? How many of them guys that was in the situation with duck Left something out here for them people, for their people to have. Because they probably ain't going to get back out. So they're going to spend the rest of their time in prison. That was their end game. You see, their end game was to go to prison and stay the rest of their life in prison. So I'm hoping this video touch one of you guys and y'all can see. I don't want that to be my end game. I don't want my end game to be in prison. During the rest of my life in prison. Trying to fight like hell to get out on a murder charge. You heard me? I don't believe that most of you guys in the streets right now, if you see this video and you 20 years old, 25 years old, I don't think your end game is to end up in prison. But you got to realize it come along with the territory the longer you stay out there. The longer you stay out there, the more opportunities it is for them to put their hands on you. And when they put their hands on you, boy's ugly. Boy's ugly when they put their hands on you. 
whether it's from a body, shootings, robbing, dope cases, conspiracy, gang related activity, scamming, it don't make a difference. Now some of y'all gonna get a little pat on the wrist one or two times and don't learn nothing. Oh yeah, it's all right. Now I go there and do two years, come back, I get back in the streets again. But every time you go, dog, you start over from zero when you get out. Every time you go to prison and get out, you start over from zero. So I'm asking you again, what is your end game? What's your end game, homie? What's your end game? You're going to get out there in the streets, right? You're from 20. You got 20 to 30. You got 10 years. What you going to do in that 10 year span? Ask yourself, what is your plan for this 10 year span? I'm 20 years old. I got me some money. I got my jewelry already. I got me a nice car. I got me a, a little sack. I got about 100 grand, 200 grand up under my mattress. What's your end game? Oh, I'm going to get a million. All right. Get a million. I'm still asking you, what's your end game? Do you plan on making some investments? Do you plan on leaving the streets alone? Do you plan on getting you some doors? Getting you a couple of homes, a couple of rental properties? Are you planning on doing that? Or is your game, it's stay in the game until it's whatever? You know, some of us rock like that. Some guys stay in the game forever. It is what it is. I'm not knocking what you do. But I'm just saying, if you're going to be that big boy, and you're going to be the guy that's making all that noise in the streets, just, be, just know that the end game ain't, might don't be how you think it is. See, the end game could be, if you out here doing drills, let's say, okay, you out here doing drills. You, 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 you racking up bodies. You spraying up every block. That you, anybody get you out of line, you spraying the block up. Anybody can get it, right? What's your end game? Because you know y'all on demon time, so what's y'all end game? I guess y'all end game is to go be with the devil. Because y'all on his time. But how that's going to help your people? How that's going to help your mama if she out here struggling? How you gonna be able to leave something to one of your kids if you choose to? Or if you have something? How that's gonna help you if you have to go do 15, 20 years, 30 years and get out? How that's gonna help you? Because a lot of these guys don't tell you when they get out of prison at 45 and 50 what they're doing, what they what, what they're gonna deal with when they get out. They're gonna be struggling. It's a struggle. It's a struggle. So I'm asking you, little homie, what's your end game? What's your end game? Is it get 10 bricks? 10 bricks of fentanyl? 10 bricks of um, cocaine? 10 bricks of molly? I don't know what it is. Is it just to make a million dollars? Two million dollars? Is it the bigger the is it to be the biggest kingpin in your city? The biggest dope boy in your city? The biggest scam in your city? The the, the most known uh, um, murderer in your city? The most known stepper in your city? The biggest scam in your city? What is your end game? I want to know. You should ask yourself that question. Let's say you a little homie, right? You out there, right? And in your family, you got your mom. Because most of us raised in the household with single parents. So let's say you got your mom. You got your mom and dad, that's great. But let's say you got your mom. And say she's working a nine to five and she done figure out a way to, to, to purchase the house that y'all to be raised up in. Then you get out here in the streets. Right? You go to prison. Right? You get 15 years for robbery or aggravated assault. She got to help support you while you're in prison. That shit backwards. Now you're taking from her. This is what the streets do. They don't tell you that. This is the part of the game they don't tell you. See, nobody thought about that. I'm going to go out here and shoot this nigga up, and I'm going to go to prison, and I'm going to have my mama take care of me while I'm in prison. Come on, dog. That's how it go. That's how it's really set up, because that's how most of us living. Most of the guys in prison right now is depending on somebody on the outside to take care of them. That's gangster. That's gangster. Is that gangster? Is, is that's is that's being a man. You got to depend on somebody on the outside. Your little sister, your cousin, your mama, your auntie to send you something because you fucked up. 
because you weren't thinking about your end game. Now, hopefully you're a little dude out here got some paper. And if them people lock you up, you got a little money left out here and you, your, your mama can help support you along the way and you can get your little hustle or something going on inside of them. But most of them ain't got that. Most of them fucked up. 95%, I'm gonna say 90% of the dudes in prison are fucked up. Financially. Financially. So what is your end game? So you don't have to go through that. If you get in that sight, what is your end game? If you stepping and you murder niggas, what's your end game? If you a scammer, what's your end game? What's your end game, bro? Get out the game. That's the goddamn end game. Get out the game. Find your way to build you a homestead. You got to have your food, water, and shelter. See, this is what the game don't teach you, bro. Teach us. We jump out there in the game, most of us young. We raise up in a house with a single family mom, so we automatically see this woman as this authoritative figure over us. Most of us. Because the, this is the way the system was designed. They done took the leaders away. After the civil rights, that, they couldn't have that shit again. They don't want no more leaders standing up to the plate showing young black men how to be leaders. Uh-uh. We got to get rid of that. So we're going to bring this hair on in there first. Help. Knock off the balance. And we're going to give you guys that was unfortunate in the neighborhoods a way to make money through these illegal drugs. And in return, it'll help break up the family household. Then you got the 80s come in. They come in with the cocaine and the crack. This, this is what's a, a continual plan to destroy the family structure and, 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 and put different leaders in front, of, in front of our eyes so we can start following their path. This is where the kingpins came into play. So we start looking at the kingpins in the neighborhood as our leaders. It's just what it was. They took away the real leaders, the guys that were trying to preach family, um, education, economics, the things that we really need to survive as a people, as a unit. Just ask yourself this question. How the hell is 2024 and we making more money than ever but own way less than we ever owned before in our lives as a people. You got to think about back in the days, people owned their own schools, their own banks, their own bus companies, their own taxi companies, their own hospitals, their own colleges, their own businesses. Everything that we needed, we owned. But today, only thing we own is the motherfucking block. And we don't own the block. We just standing on the block. We want to own something. We want to own something. So that's why we pick up these guns and try and, and, and try and uh, um, protect our block Oh this our block Oh this old block This our block You want to own that But you don't own it You don't own it But you want to own it You want to claim it You know like claim jumping You want to claim jump These people apartment complex As is yours Because you don't have nothing of your own See you should be in the game Trying to figure a way to get something of your own so you can really claim it is yours because it is yours. Them projects that we be hanging in, that y'all be hanging in, I don't hang in them no more. But them projects that y'all hanging in, that y'all claiming and banging for, them ain't yours. Y'all just live there temporarily because that was a place they gave your mama to stay. That's all it was. It was a housing project to give your mama somewhere to stay. And then so you, the young black man, the young black male, can be raised in an environment that nine times out of ten, it leads you to committing crimes and going to jail. So that's their end game. They had a plan. They got an end game for us. Our end game is the goddamn prison cell or the graveyard. And another plan they was to break up the family structure. And the other plan was to make sure that woman is the head of the household. It's more women head of the household than it is men. And there's more men in prison and there's more women raising young boys by themselves because the men are in prison. That's their end game. What's yours? It's real important while you out here in the streets, man, and you making, you got an opportunity to make some money. And if you making it illegally, if you making this money illegally, you need to take heed to what I'm saying. 
What's your end game? Where are you going to put that money that you're making in the streets so it can benefit you in the future? See, I made some key investments when I was out there. I bought a couple of properties. I invested in a couple of things. when I, not, not a whole bunch, but I invested in something. So when I came home from prison, I still had. I still had some of the things that I left out here in the streets. And now I can see the value of it. I'm going to give y'all some game. I bought a building in 1989 for 89000 Today, that same building is worth 420000 I made a key investment. I bought a piece of property for 19,000. Today, that same property worth over 300 and some thousand. I made some key investments. Not saying that I did it intentionally like I knew what I was doing. I just made some investments on mistakes and been out here doing it for the wrong reason, but it was key investments now that I look back at. It. Now that I look back at it, and from this point on, that's all I'm doing. I'm thinking about homestead. What I'm going to build up, what I'm going to have, where I'm going to live at, what I'm going to be secure at for the rest of my life. Young guys in the street, y'all need to think about that. Because you may be the one out here that lived to be 70, 80 years old, 90 years old. Where you going to be living at? Where your home going to be at? What type of lifestyle you going to have? You still think you're going to be running around here in the streets at 55, 60 years old. Think you're still gonna be doing drill, nigga? Yeah, it might be locked up. Think you're gonna be still selling that site? Yeah, it might be locked up. So I'm asking you again, what's your end game? That's very, very important. That's all this video is about, just to get inside the hill so y'all can understand and plan for your future. As men, it's our responsibility to provide the shelter, not the women's. They done tricked us to believe it's the woman's responsibility to provide a roof over our head. That's backwards. It's supposed to be the men's responsibility to provide the goddamn shelter. But that's how this system is designed, and we got to understand that. We got to understand that the system is designed backwards, for us anyway. Make it happen or you cap it.